So Tony, uh, uh, thank you very much for coming on the uh, on the podcast. Uh, this uh, is the Business Worth and Mindset podcast, uh, which uh, generally we are trying to capture inspirational stories of uh, you know people like yourselves who've got a uh, uh, interesting stories um, on which uh, you know our uh, listeners and uh, those people who are um, following the podcast can get to to understand what people are doing out there and the lessons that they can uh, uh, learn from it and just uh, get get inspired because uh, your your story is uh, particularly interesting so we'll probably just go through just a number of points around if you take us through your story like uh, you know uh, where you come from, you know your, your your story leading up to where you are now, and what the, uh, the the vision is for the future, and within that we will also try and capture um, what sort of uh, lessons and things that uh, the listeners or people listening to your story can take from that, and what can help them in in whatever it is that they are doing in their personal or business life. So. Let's just uh, pick it up from there, from the start, just to understand your, your, your story. Just give us a background of where you've come from and, and where we are now. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think the first thing is that my background is probably a bit unconventional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for the first six years of my life, um, I was fostered by Dutch people. Okay. My parents were the Windrush generation who came from Jamaica. Yeah. Um, but my mother was a nurse working long hours and my father was at university at the time so I was fostered out to these Dutch people. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't really know that my birth parents were my real parents. I didn't really see them for the first six years. Mm -hmm. So when I went back to them it was a big shock to me and I really didn't know who they were yeah. and I didn't know who I was. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that was the first big shock. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that followed on from that was um, when I was coming home from my first day at school and people started shouting the N-word at me and throwing stones yeah. and then I realised that I looked different from my family as I yeah. thought of them. Wow. Big shock going back to my parents um, who had a different experience because they came over in that generation, mm. um, their focus was on you know, if you want to do anything or be somebody, you've got to work 10 times as hard. Yeah. Yeah. So if I wasn't first in every subject, mm. if I didn't excel in everything, yeah. my parents were not happy. Yeah. Yeah. When I came home, if I'd been beaten up yeah. um, or being bullied, my father's first response was to beat me again and tell me to go back out and beat up whoever had beaten me. Yeah. Their experience was so hard, so raw, as first generation immigrants, mm. that that was their way of coping. To me, I didn't understand it at the time, but looking back, I do now. Yeah. Yeah. However, that had an impact on me, and by the time I was 14, I was first diagnosed with being depressed, yeah. clinically, and I had my first dose of antidepressants. Mm. My father wanted me to excel academically and to be a lawyer. Mm. I didn't want to be a lawyer at all, mm. and I wanted to do psychology. Yeah. Probably due to my earlier experiences, I wanted to find out what made people tick. Mm. Why am I I? Why are people as they are? Mm. My father wasn't happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. Then I had another strange experience when I came home from school, and uh, I must have been about 16, mm. and the house was all padlocked up, couldn't mm. get in. And I didn't know what had happened. My parents were nowhere. So I went to a phone box, as they had in those days, mm. and I rang my best friend. And I said, I can't get in. And he said, hang on, I'll get my mum. And they came and picked me up, and I moved in to their house mm. with them. And that's where I stayed for several years. I went to college at 18 to yeah. do psychology. Mm. And during that whole period, I was on antidepressants, ironically. Yeah. Yeah. When I was 22, the medics were confounded, I think, by the fact that I'd not reacted to any of these things. Mm -hmm. And so they sent me for my first course of electroconvulsive therapy. Wow. Mm -hmm. That scrambled my brain up, mm -hmm. and it actually destroys your short-term memory. Wow. Just, now, just, just for the 
the listeners, maybe you can just tell, um, elaborate a bit more what, what that involves <laughs> and what it is, because it sounds quite okay. a technical term. Yeah. Right. Now, um, maybe some of the listeners have heard mm. uh, or seen a film called One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, ah, yes. mm. where mm. Um, a patient is strapped down and they mm. attach electrodes to the side of the patient's head mm. and they give them a series of electric shocks. Wow. And that is how electroconvulsive therapy works. Yeah. Okay. The idea is that that will, as they thought in those days, mm. rebalance the chemicals in your brain and mm. cure your depression. Yeah. Yeah. Now some people say that that's helped to some extent. Mm. Um, now it's virtually not used as a result of its effects yeah. and it's classified as being somewhat barbaric. Yeah. So things have moved on. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. So um, moving on from there, what, what, what do you think would have been the, the impact of, of, of that and that background into propelling you to change your life or, or how did the treatment evolve to to where we would say you probably got into now what's the, the next stage of the uh, the process for you right well what ha happened after that was virtually under 40 years mm. of taking antidepressants wow. each time a new antidepressant came onto the market mm -hmm. they tried me with that yeah and then I suppose the real issue is, what was the impact of all that? Yeah. 40 years of different types of antidepressants. Mm -hmm. All these things have side effects as yeah. well. Yeah. And that has to be taken into account. Mm. At the moment, 5.6 million people in this country every day, that's about an eighth of the population, mm. is it a tenth? Mm. Take some form of antidepressant yeah. or painkiller quite a big number yeah. Yeah. huge amount mm. and then I suppose the next thing that was a, a bit of a shock was about six years ago mm. I had pains in my back and down my leg mm. and that was as a result of a slip disc arthritis and sciatica mm. Mm. so I was put on very heavy-duty painkillers tramadol and gabapentin and opiates mm. And also twice a year had cortisol injections in my back to ease the pain, supposedly. Yeah. Mm. At mm. the same time as taking this cocktail of antidepressants. Yeah. Wow. So goodness knows what the effect of that was. Of that, yeah. <laughs> so it seems that uh, you know your journey has just been characterized by all this medication and treatments and the depression and all of that. So. <clears throat> Where are you, are you now? Where, where would, would you say you, you are now with all of that after all these years of uh, this <laughs> well, medication and treatment? About March last year, I had a further complication. Well, before that, about the end of the, Christ, the, end of the year, the Christmas before mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. I felt like I was going to have another breakdown again. Yeah. And I felt myself really going down. Mm -hmm. Um, something else which I probably should have mentioned earlier is that about six years ago mm. I actually had enough and with all the antidepressants sat in a bar yeah. with two mm. bottles of wine, took the antidepressants mm. and the wine. Oh. Oh. I woke up in a psychiatric ward having oh. been sectioned. sectioned. I did not know where I was. It took a while to come round. Mm. And again, they did not know what to do with the depression. So mm. they gave me some more electroconvulsive therapy yeah. at that point. Yeah. And I think it's safe to say then I really was a complete mess. mess yeah. was, was that at that point your attempt to, you sort of feeling like overwhelmed, you had enough? Was that an attempt to sort of end it all? Or what was your thinking um, around at that, that time. That's a really interesting point mm. and I, I like the way that you use the word thinking mm. because that's crucial to everything. Yeah. Now at the time it was probably the result of feeling very depressed, mm. the end of a toxic relationship yeah. um, and financial problems, business problems all imploded at yeah, once yeah. and so that's what brought about that situation. Mm. 
then what happened subsequently is I got a business coach mm. and he made me read a number of books which yeah. a lot of your property people would have been think and grow rich yeah. um, rich dad poor dad and so on yeah and then from that I was really interested in the thinking element of it yeah the mindset the I mindset yeah. precisely mm -hmm. and so from that i read a book by um, a philosopher called james allen mm -hmm. called as a man thinketh mm -hmm. and also the works of uh, emile Coué, yeah. who's a french psychologist mm -hmm. and a lot of people might be familiar with his uh, phrase every day yeah. in every way mm -hmm. getting better and better yeah, yeah. It's all about the thoughts mm. and what you think is what you become. What you become, yeah. And that may have been said to me years ago, but it was only then that it started to resonate. Yeah. And I thought, I get it. 80% mm -hmm. of what we think are negative thoughts. Yeah. And unless mm. we, one, understand that, mm. two, stop them in their tracks, and three, train our minds to think differently yeah that's what goes round and round in your head, in the head yeah. and if you're depressed at the time you're on a hamster wheel yeah. and it's not getting better wow. mm -hmm. so reading some of these books opened my eyes to i suppose a bit of self-introspection and thinking mm -hmm. a lot of these things are due to the way that i think yeah these problems are the way that i perceive the world mm. and how I interact with the world mm. and perhaps if I start doing that differently yeah. things will start happening differently, differently. Wow. which they did wow. that's that's very interesting because when I talk about all these things about mindset and our thoughts and how you know the things that we think about can actually manifest into their physical form there's actually no distinction between whether those thoughts are positive thoughts or negative thoughts the, the effect is the same essentially so if you are thinking and you make yourself have these positive thoughts the manifestation is also the positive outcome but uh, like you say it's quite a staggering percentage that one is it 80 yes. percent uh, you know we think negatively around things if we could only shift to that and you know get to think the positive thoughts you'll find the effects can actually be amazing but i guess from you from your point of view it's it's the environment and the background that you grew up in which which would have uh, uh, you know to a greater extent uh, led you to be in, in the state that you are in in terms of uh, thinking those um, um, negative thoughts uh, to, to the level that uh, um, you, you were at the point that you <coughs> nearly um, reached to be thinking of uh, you know essentially end, ending your life so um, it's, it's quite in inspiring that you picked up on the mentality that it would just take that shift of mentality from the negative to the positive to take you to to, to where um, you could be and where you are now